Okay, let's talk about 6-3 uh, in normal probability distributions and applications of normal distributions. All right, back in 6-2, uh, the standard normal, we talked about how we could take a normal distribution. Okay, we could take a normal distribution with a mean of 0, a standard deviation of 1, and understand that the area under, the, as long as it was normal, the area under the curve added up to 1. We understand that our probabilities add up to 1. And so there's this idea that if we pick a spot on our normal curve, which we call the z-score, we can find, we can find the area under the curve up to that z-score working left to right. And that area that we pick up is our probability. Okay, the problem with the standard normal is that we typically don't in real life collect data that has a mean of zero or a standard deviation of one. Okay, there's just not many things that are normal with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Today we're going to learn a conversion uh, using the mean and the standard deviation of real life more typical mean and standard deviations uh, and still find that z-score and we still have a normal curve with an area under the curve of 1, so we can still find the probabilities, even though we have a little bit more uh, interesting means and standard deviations. Okay? So the key concept. This section presents methods for working with normal distributions that are not standard. That is, their mean is not 0 and the standard deviation is not 1. Okay, the key concept is, with, is that we can use a simple conversion that allows us to standardize any normal distribution so that the same method, so whatever method we were doing in 6.2, we will use here. Uh, okay, recall that method, okay, that process. Let's go over that process again. One, draw the normal curve. Draw your picture. Okay. Step two was place the mean and the z-score. Three was shade a specified region. Shade the region you want to deal with. Step four was use table A2, your z-score table, to find area, which is the probability. Okay? Remember that, that table A2, uh, Get it off, Angel, if you need to. Print it off. Uh, you have a positive z-score side, negative z-score side. Okay? That conversion formula is no surprise to you. you were, this was in Chapter 3. We, uh, we actually were tested over it. To find a z-score, we take any specified x value. This is The x is some data value that we're interested in minus the mean divided by the standard deviation and because our table for z-scores is always in two decimals we are going to round our z-scores to two decimal places okay an example tall clubs international has a requirement that women must be at, le at least seventy inches tall so there's our data value that we're interested in seventy inches tall Given that women have normally distributed heights, so we have our normality, with a mean of 63.8 inches and a standard deviation of 2.6 inches, find the percentage of women who satisfy that height requirement. So let's go through our process. Let's draw our picture. Draw our normal curve. We have our mean of 63.8. We have our height of 70, so we know we're going to be over here to the right. Okay? But we need a z-score. Oh, by the way, at least 70 inches tall. So at least this tall tells me that the area that I want to find, the shaded region, is to the right. We want to talk about, if we're talking at least 70 inches tall, we're talking about 71 inches, 74 inches. That is all to the right of 70 inches. So this is the probability, this is the area that I want to find. Okay? To do that, I have to have a z-score that relates to 70 inches when I have a mean of 63.8 and a standard deviation of 2.6. So I use my conversion. Uh, 70 minus 63.8 divided by 2.6. I get my calculator out. 70 
the minus sixty three point eight equals divided by two point six I get two point three eight a z score of two point three eight two point three eight so now we've converted this kind of messy data to our standard z score of two point three eight now I get out my z score table I have a positive z score of two point three eight so I go down the left hand column to two point three over 2.08 and I get 0.9913. Now, a less nuanced student would write 0.9913 as their solution. But since we've been, uh, we're familiar with this, we know that this 0.9913 represents the area from the left all the way to my Z score of 2.38. It's not the shaded region that I want. What I need to do is actually take 1 minus 0 0.9913 because all of the area adds up to 1. So I'm going to subtract 1 minus 0 0.9913 and I get 0 0.0087. So what is the probability of a woman being 70 inches or taller? 0 0.0087, less than 1% according to this data of women are taller than 70 inches. Okay? Uh, here's a little bit cleaner view of it. We have our 0 0.9913, 0 0.0087, our Z score scale down at the bottom. Okay? <clears throat> now, we just went from an X value to a Z score to a probability. Okay? The next thing we're going to do is go backwards. We're going to go from a probability to a z score to a specific data value. You can understand that if you're an engineer and you want to create something and you want it to fit 99% uh, of people, you're starting with a probability and you want to work your way back to that certain data value, what you're actually, the size of the product you're actually going to engineer. Okay? You're going to predetermine your probability and work back to a specific data value. Okay? Now, to go from the X to a Z score to a probability, we do, used our conversion formula z equals x minus the mean over the standard deviation. Okay? Now, if we're going to work backwards, we want to go backwards to solve for uh, z, sorry, for x. So I'm going to do a little bit of algebra here and show you that we're just going to use the conversion formula backwards. If I multiply both sides times the standard deviation, I get uh, z. Uh, times the standard deviation. Okay, So now I've got z sigma equals x minus mu. I'm going to add mu to both sides to solve for the x value. My x value is the mean plus the z score times the standard deviation. Okay, So I'm going to start with a probability. I'm going to find my z score. Once I get my z score, I'm going to solve for x using this formula. Okay, So a probability gets me to a z-score. The z-score through our conversion backwards gives me my x, my data value. Okay, And that's what we see in this formula here. Our data value equals the mean plus the z-score times the standard deviation. Okay, Let's look at a, an example of this. Aircraft cabins. When designing aircraft cabins, what ceiling height will allow 95% of men to stand without bumping their heads? We're not, we don't care about 100%. We'll never probably get 100% unless you make a 10-foot, 8-foot tall cabin. But that's not efficient. Okay, You want to make your cabin a height that suffices most people, almost all of them, all the usual people, 95%. Okay, uh, Because the taller your cabin height the more expensive the plane. So you want to try to minimize cost. You're an engineer. You want, you want people to be comfortable, but you want to minimize cost. So you've determined 95% is the, 
is the, the percent that you want to make happy. Okay? Men's heights are normally distributed, very important to be normal, because now we can draw the bell curve, uh, with a mean of 69.5 and standard deviations of 2.4. So first we draw the normal distribution. I'm going to draw, the, draw through what you see here. I'm going to draw my normal. My mean is 69.5. I want 95%. Okay, 95% uh, to be shaded, so I'll shade all the way over to 95%. Okay, so my shaded region here is 0.95. I need a z-score that represents that 0.95. So I go to my table, my z-score table, and I look at 0.95, and I get 1.645. Okay? Okay. 1.645 is not my answer. That's not how many, how, how tall, okay? That's just my Z score. So I've gone from a probability to a Z score. Now I need to go ahead and find my X value. So my X value is my mean plus my Z score times my standard deviation. So I get my calculator out. 1.645 times 2.4 plus 69.5 and we get 73.448 inches. That's the height according to this data that 95% of men will not hit their heads. Okay, 73.448 inches. Okay, and we see we got the correct answer there. Okay? Let me know if you have any questions.